what he had you say, what he had you ask, that's what he will do. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the voice of God saying, Cast ye the unprofitable servant into the darkness, outer darkness. Sure, he's a servant. But he's unprofitable. I don't need him. Cast him out. The outer darkness. The command of the Lord. And so if there is unprofitable, what will God say to the profitable? Oh God, make me a profitable servant. That should be our prayer, Lord. Now, that should be our prayer. Lord, make me a profitable servant. Make me a profitable servant. Put it in me. Everything that will make me profitable to make this church grow and spread. We are in for the growth. We are in for the spreading. Put it in me, Lord. Whatsoever that will make me profitable in this agenda of growth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, Lord, my God, how excellent is your name. Oh, Lord, my God, how excellent is your name. Oh, Lord, my God, how excellent is your name oh god my lord how excellent is your name oh lord my god how excellent is your name oh lord my god how excellent is your name oh lord my God, how excellent is your name, oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your name.
That's what we're to hear you. Oh, 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 how excellent is your name. That's an angelic voice. That's the voice of the charismatic. The Lord has brought us here. How excellent is your name. The Lord has gathered us here. How glorious is your name. The Lord of stars. The very great and morning star. How glorious is your name. He has been elevated to the point and level of excellence. And all his ministers. We are here, Lord, to be elevated from glory unto glory to the level of excellence. In every aspect of us, advance us, Lord. Advance us, Lord. Advance us, Lord, to the height of excellence that it will be very, very glorious in the land of Sicilia. And let the church help me say, Amen. amen. Let me can say better, amen. amen. Sit down, sit down. If there's somebody outside, please. Come in. I want to see the minister's seat filled up. Take a very good seat. We are coming up. Uh, by this time tomorrow, we would have shared the grace. So I bet I want us to move to the climbers. We have seen something good at the very beginning. And we have seen something better along the line. But we want to see our best. We have not seen our best in the program. We want to see our best. We are every participant have an evidence. We want to see our best when every voice here has gotten his own testimony. Yes, some have gotten, but other brothers have not gotten. It will come to that point where everyone that have come here we go home with his own assured answers that's our expectation that the lord has brought us to this mountain of excellence where you move from the level of being good from the level of being fair to the level of being excellent we've been sharing testimonies and the ministers that have been ministering here are well known to us they are not foreign ministers who we are not sure of their foundations and their secrecy. These are people we saw from their infancy. The last minister that spoke, Professor Collins, most of us in the ministry are aware of him. How he started, how he became a student, and how he became a student coordinator. And even right there in a suit, Eshut is not a, a national university. Eshut is just a state university that people will not like their children to go. In fact, it is those who can't afford and who don't have great connection who put their children to Eshut. That's where Collins went. And he went there and became a, 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 a coordinator. And people say, hey, he's carrying the church on his head. He became the student uh, coordinator. G.O. is just using 
this boy want to lavish this boy this boy have left this school is just being a, a coordinator and following you he will be finished and no allowance nothing given to him even after his graduation he still continue to be a coordinator his college could not graduate some of them had to repeat two three years but why is going being a student coordinator how go he still graduated well and without wasting time the university of nigeria the highest university in nigeria called the unn that's the only university that represents nigeria when you hear university of nigeria it is one there are not two and that's where he was picked and he was picked as a staff and was made a lecturer assistant and from there he became today it has become almost the all and all. If you go to Nsuka, in fact, every department is connected to the University of Computer, I mean to the Department of Computer, because it's a service department to every other. And today, you can see him as an international figure. And there is no noble conference worldwide that he is not enlisted. It's not just any Naira money. No, not Naira. When Naira devaluated, his own has not devaluated. We see him here talking of California. Does California pay with Naira? That's what we are talking about. God is interested. God is, in, God is watching. God is watching. God is seeing. God is seeing. Some people may think you are being deceived. But at the end, results will occur. I may not be able to pay him, but the God whom I serve, who employed me, has paid him more than more. Shout hallelujah. And, and more coming, we are here as parents, we are here as pastors, we are here as leaders to guide our children, our young stars that are coming up, to give them direction, to give them direction, to give them direction, give them direction, give them direction so that in this ministry for what i have seen long ago there's nobody that will submit himself and follow this course and will not end up a star nobody no little child no little that will not graduate a star and touch the world today i preach on profitable servants Because that is the, the accumulation of all these things we are doing. Profitable servant. We are looking for those who will serve the Lord. We are looking for those who will serve God in different capacity. But today I have come to know that there are profitable ones that are unprofitable ones. If there are profitable servants, then sure there are unprofitable servants. The statement in verse 30, where we've read Matthew chapter 25, ended with saying the unprofitable servant should be cast into the outer darkness, where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Profitable, unprofitable servant. Because God is a beast, God is in business. And that's why Jesus said, no, am I not ought to be in my father's business at the age of 12? Why are you looking for me? Mama, Mary, why are you searching for me and crying? Ought, I ought not to be after my father's business. God is a business God. He's in business. And those who are understanding we join him in this business. Profitable servant. So people will say, I'm not a servant, I am a son. <laughs> to be a son is good. But a son alone does not have what a servant has. A servant has authority. A son is just an inheritor. 
We are sons anyway by birth, by new birth, by new birth through Christ we become sons. But we are servants of God by responsibility and by obedience. His responsibility, his commitment, his obedience that makes us servants. And that is why we have a full of sons. That's why we have some irresponsible sons. Sons of sorrows. But a servant is a servant by responsibility, by an assignment. It is servants that help to develop business. When it comes to business, my friend, servants are needed. When it comes to developing business, my friend, servants are needed. Now let me say that it's servants that are committed with authority. Authorities are committed to servants. They are empowered to do business and do, you know, advancement. A servant. When you see great men, great men are great by the assistance and help of servants. Any merchant and any great man you see here on earth is not alone. He became great by the assistance and help of servants. And that's why, why Jesus came here on earth. He came though a son, but he left everything that made him son. He came here as a servant and was humbled himself just like a servant. It was in that service, in that servanthood that he was exalted and given a name above all names. Servant, faithful servant. Now let me guess again emphasize that servants are given authority they are given power. Every servant has a distinguishing power and authority and gifts. Gifts that makes him a profitable servant. It is these gifts that when acted upon, when were utilized, the servant will become a profitable, he will make profit, he will make profit. He will make advancement. To, he will advance the kingdom kingdoms are advanced by the well management and determination and diligence of servants who put the authority into action who put the gift into action who put the whatever given to them into action and it is when these things are put to work that the kingdom is developed and the kingdom is advanced there are sons you will see today, they are squanderers. Squanderers. Squanderers of what great thing their father has achieved. They will just squander it. Because they are sons. If you ask me, say, Don't, is it your own? Is it not my papa? My papa gave it to me. The, the land, landed property, they will sell it, squander it. Because they were never raised up as servants. They never served. That's what I mean. They never learned by obedience. They never served. But Jesus Christ learned obedience by what he suffered and served as a servant. It was his servanthood that made him a kingdom builder. He came here and left all authorities he had heaven came here to serve. Now another point I want to say is that to whichever whatsoever is given is what you are going to use to serve that's why he said to him much is given much is expected every servant is given a portion a portion of gifts a portion of authority a portion of assignment a portion of power and to whom much is given much is expected the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 48 makes it clear that to whom much is given, much is expected. 
and where he fails in his expectation there condemnation comes where he fails in his expectation people fail you may see somebody walking and putting on a nice suit and may be looking very fine but he is a failed soul he may look good but if you get close to him by what has been invested by that kind of assignment and expectation you will know that he is a failure how by the expectation All this region of overseers, region of overseers, not just by title, but by the investments that have been done on them, by the exposure, by the training, by the power that have been invested in them, they are now being given assignments to every region with an expectation that they go and conquer the region, and it is that expectation that makes a mark. To say this one is a success, this one is a failure. He said, How can he be a failure? He's riding Jeep. How can he be a failure? He has a wife. He said, No, 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 no. A failure in a sense that by what we are expecting. By what we're expecting. And that's why when I visit them, my interest is have they, they been able to fulfill the headquarters expectation? The headquarters is it is the a fulfillment of the headquarters expectation that makes him a success or not of a truth all of them we are not given equal gifts all of them we are not given equal talents some are given 10 10 branches some are given five branches some are given even eight branches and make them regional overseers. And we are expecting that after a year or two, they will come and say, Daddy, help what I gave me 10 branches. Now I have labored and I have gotten 20 branches. We said, Well done, good servants. And come into great joy. That's what God will say. Good and faithful. That's a mean. Good and faithful servant. The other one will say, uh, You gave me five branches. And after two, three years, that five branches have turned to 15 branches. We say, Hey, well done. Based on the gifts, based on the talents, based on the portions given to them that expected to go and do business. Everybody said do business. No, I said do business. All this training, expenses on this training, even before we begin to gather many of you, we have been restricting our training to the region of Asiaans. Many times you hear the region of Aziz and Gadri, they've been undergoing some training. That's why they are far higher than others. And now we want to involve you. Because you are going to help them to achieve their dream. Not live only, not be serious only. Like Jesus expected much from that fig tree based on the much it has received. And going there, he saw leaves only. He placed a curse on him. Because he's unfruitful and unprofitable. The farmer will say he's unfruitful. The businessman will say he's unprofitable. It depends on your area with the kind of eye you will look at. I want to ask you a question. Are you a fruitful servant? Because the fruitful servant or the profitable servant that makes the church grow. 
every profitable servant will engage on the profit i mean on the ventures that will cause a profit the moment he arrives he begins to say this agenda now we have is there any gain in it is there any profit can it increase the church can it better the church what report are we going to write to the headquarters at the end of this year I tell the uh, uh, national admin, he said, we are not afraid of employing people even on full time. We have just gotten a national uh, evangelist. Put him in Abuja, put him in a good house, and we we'll have to pay him every month. And they are saying, hey, Oga, where will we get the money to do this? Where will we get? I said, no. The problem is on where we get the money. What you ask me is, can that man deliver? Can he deliver? Don't ask me where we get the money. My problem is, can he deliver? If he can deliver, sure, I need more of that. I need more of that. Why is America giving you people visa, free, free visa, employ, lottery, and go, come, come, come. They are not employing a fully fools. They can invite the whole Africa and employ them, provided the people that are coming and coming with the energy to help develop, improve, and expand their economy. From you, they will make their own gain and pay you well. The evil is when you employ. A consumer who will come and consume the space consume the little space consume the little food consume the there is no business man that produces consume I told the brethren in Enugu that my father fortunately or fortunately he could not get a man child except me and when he tried to get a man, a woman comes home. He tried again to get another man, and a woman comes home. He continued to, until at the time, we thought that mama had no man child in the belly. And he became angry with man. And he come to our houses, plenty, plenty, plenty sisters everywhere. And it's only me. And it was, it was, it was a fear, a terror to my father. That's why two of us will never enter the same vehicle. Me and my father never enter the same vehicle. Even if we are going together to a place, he will put me in the vehicle with my sister and say, go, I will come later. Or he, he will go with my sisters and say, come later. I didn't understand why. Initially, I was saying this man hates me. And so we have plenty of gears. Letter, 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 letter. He got one. When my, 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 everybody have lost hope. Got one boy again added to me. That one is like my son. As young as he is. If you look at the age gap, you just know that I'm supposed to burn him. But because my mother continued on stop. It has to take part of my my children. My mother born part of my children. I only born two. This man had he had almost twelve or eleven pregnancy, and never got one operation. Never born anyone by CS. Oh, me born two. That two self that God in your name. I said, no, no, it's okay. But I was worried. How will my father cope? How will my father cope? How will he cope with all these battalions? How will he cope? Until I came to understand that this man was a businessman. Come to the court. A businessman. Anything in his hand, he will use it and do business. Anything he's had. 
And so while we are still kids going to primary school and go, he engaged all of us, employed all of us. He opened servings for us, servings. Not servings in the bank, but obokre, what we call obokre. Everybody say obokre. Everybody say obokre. So when you go home and they ask you, what did the GO talk that is, nobody has ever taught you? Say what? This message that nobody has, you just go and say, you are telling the person, say, the word we had today, we have never had it from any man of God. They say, eh? What is that message? I said, apocryphal. Everybody say, apocryphal. My father opened up Bokri for all of us. And before we go to school, we must, we have business. He was a farmer. He does poultry. He has a pigry. He also has sheep. He has all that. So he shared it to us. Before you go to school, you spend at least one hour to take care before you go to school. I was telling the Onisha people, the Onisha people, that I used to be going late because unfortunately, the, the few he gave me, there is one called Ungaboro from me. This is another, an, another language, it's an, another vocabulary. Everybody says Ungaboro. The group he gave to me, the, the, the sheep he gave me, there is one called Ungaboro. Unfortunately for me, that Ngaburo will make you go late to school because he must disappear. And it is only when, by the time I will bring in the rest, that I will count all of them because Papa will be on the door and say, Count them, count them. By the time I count them, I find that Ngaburo has disappeared. I will go about looking for Ngaburo, looking for Ngaburo. Looking for Ngaburo. By the time I will discover Ngaburo where he's hidden and enjoying himself, I will pursue him, pursue him, pursue him, and then bring him in. And when I go to school, the man that I'll first meet is I give you sis. Everybody say, I give you sis. That's another dictionary. I give you sis is already there with your hair. He said, I know you, one bend. That's what he calls me, one bend. That's the shortest. One bear, I know you will come late. Come. And he will hit me six. The six I'm telling you is blah like everyone. My wife didn't see my buttocks before he married me. Because if she has seen my buttocks, he will never marry me. Because the kind of bulala is still earmarked upon my buttocks. Six. Every day six. I got it. But at the end of the season, everybody will count his own. Hallelujah. Papa will give you maybe 10. And that 10, whatever it produced, at the end of the day, there is all the products, you share it into two. One is his own. The other one is our own. So if he gives you 10 at the beginning, and maybe after a year you bring it and you have 20 or you have 30 you share that profit everybody say profit it is a profit that is shared the capital is not touched that one belongs to him are you hearing me it's the profit that you share and you get you take half and you take half you is your own Anything you sell out of it, you go to your obokri. Anything you sell out of it, you go to your obokri. So with all my sisters, we are doing business. Everybody are doing business. And we are in our house, very rich. And later on, our neighbors also decided to come. And we'll give them. If you give them two, three. Like myself, I had to give somebody two or three. The person went and began to do business, just like a number of people are doing. We come, I give you, you go and do business, and you'll be entering into my obokri. And we are all rich. Remember, the one Papa gave to us is called a gift. Everybody say a gift. Nobody 
receives promotion by the gift the gift doesn't belong to you nobody you may be gifted in many ways you may be gifted in many ways as i'm here and i'm preaching i'm manifesting the gift of god nobody is promoted by the gift you have the, because it's a gift you didn't labor for it but it is the profit you made out of the gift that is what will earn your promotion shout hallelujah profitable every person is expecting a profit every wise man and that made my father to become the very rich man in our area rich in the sense that he made people great Not, this is a man who didn't go to school oh. he didn't know how to sign signature and go. he only went to school once in his life only one day he went to school but the teacher flogged him he could not endure I give you six. Just one flogging. My father could not endure it. He left and got catapult and gave it to the teacher. To why? He said, if you see me again here at school, here. That's that's only once he went to school. He didn't go to time. He said the man flogged him a banner. A banner. Everybody said a banner. That's another what you say. Man flogged him a banner. He said, how can he flog me a banner? And go. So, and that's ended the school. He don't, he, till he died, he never knew how to sign his signature. And go. But he made wealth. Great wealth. I met many people wealthy. There is no poor man in a place except he's lazy. He must give you something. Or cook up. He may give you chicken to go. He has agric chicken. As a kind of species. that I got they call it a Greek one. That one can grow and be as big man. Heavy agriculture. We call it a agri. Big. And in those agri something, they lay two eggs a day. It's a species that will lay two eggs a day. And he will use it and give to different people. Those people will become great. And go. A cook agri. That's what we call it in those days. And there is nothing that sweet me than going to pick the eggs early in the morning. I'll go and pick my egg. I will have so many of them eggs. My own chicken produced egg. The man became great because half we go to him. He collect half from Sylvia. He collect what half from me. He collect half from my sister Auntie P. He collects what he will just collect everything you get. Collect half and pass home it will be more plenty. That's the kind of the Lord God Almighty is doing. When he gives you, gives you, gives you, gives you, he likes giving people, go and do business, go and do business, go and do business. It doesn't stop your school. I didn't know that this thing Papa was doing is the real thing. Because we produce our children and we say you must go to school. You must go to, don't be going to school. Don't do any other thing. Be going to school. It is now I learned from the developed country. That going to school is just one. You'll be going to school and walking. Going to school and walking. And go. And even pay your oh, pay your school fee. Praise the Lord. One of my boys, the, the, the young boys that traveled the other day. And go. He learned of my birthday. That time I was doing my anniversary. He had to fly from UK to come. He said that. I had to come because of this year bad day, this year ceremony, ceremony. I said, what do you mean? He said, yes, this is what brought me. Because for two, three years, I have not seen you. So I have to come. I said, but you are a student. He said, yes, I'm a student, but I need, I'm working. I take care of myself. I have a house. I take care of myself too. By the way, this envelope is for you. I said, no, I can't take such an envelope from a student. Big one. He said, Andy. I am not just a student. I'm working. I'm schooling. He gathered his friends. And go, Daniel, my son, is part of his friend. And go, he gathered all of them and took him out. Took them out. And go and made them happy. And go, gave them big, big envelope. 
I said, how? Oh, is America giving you money? He said, no. Over there, you have to walk and school. You have to walk and school. You have to walk and school. And go. I said, this is what my father was doing those days. He opened up Okri for us. Everybody said oh, Okri. He opened up Okri for all of us. And wrote our name in that Okri. At the end of uh, the decision, you sell all your own and put it in your own Okri. And go. And I was, I was rich as a primary school. I was so rich more than the teachers themselves. Praise the Lord. Profitable. And I want you to know the kind of business we do is based on the kind of gifts you have, talents you have, advantage you have. Because everybody should specialize in the area that it has comparative advantage. If you discover that you have plenty of children, because before I used to be angry with some of my pastors that have plenty of children. I always get angry. Because Petron told me that if you visit any person as you are doing visitation as a pastor, if they give you malt to drink, he said, thou shall never drink it. He placed it upon me. He said, thou shall never drink it until you ask the person, how many children do you have? If the person says, has four, he said, don't drink it. Don't ever, thou shall never drink it. I said that, why? He said, because some of those children, for the past one year, some of them have never taken one bottle of malt in the house. There are four, five, six. They have never even take, tasted a, a bottle. And the, the father will say, go and buy a bottle of malt for your pastor. And you, they will go and buy that bottle of malt. That's the first time they are seeing it. Too. And they will be from the window or the door, be washing how you are drinking that one bottle of mud. They are drinking it like Iken I was saying yesterday that the church people come and finish their rice and they'll be somewhere. The children will be on. they have never taken a bottle of mud for the past I mean one year. And somebody just coming to and as you are going you think they are saying good good luck for you. So Petron said thou shalt never take a mud in the house of anybody that have four five I should never take. I don't take. If I come to your house, I must ask how many children you have. If you have plenty, I will avoid. But now I have discovered that the children also are for business. If you are able to make your children do business, show them the kind of business they will be doing and producing money, then you find that plenty of children does not mean hunger. Plenty children means plenty money. Are you hearing me? Petrus was my pastor, assistant pastor under me. I used to be angry with him because he born one, born two, born again, and born again. So I, 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 I was using bad eye on him until recently. In fact, I was begging him the other day to born again for me. Because I've come now to know that no child is useless provided can be well managed are you hearing me if you can manage them very very well they will take you high look at philip i was telling you the other day he has just four gears 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 four of them then he began to say how will i manage this he was able to manage those four gears to be into prayer and they became firebrand prophetic to the extent that they became a revival center that was how Philip could fly. Finish here, he moved. Today they'll call it Astra Travel. We finish here. He was not looking for aeroplane. He was not looking for anything. He would just piam, piam, piam. He appear. Piam, 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 piam. He would disappear. That's what, what Philip was doing. Shout hallelujah. The secret were the four kids, the four daughters he has. To us now, we say it's a liability. Those girls are liability. But to him, he has been able to walk on them, walk on them, walk on them. He said, neglect not. He never neglected them as a gift. He was able to walk on them to the extent that 
while Philip was going to preach, four of them were in agreement. They went, oh, my friend, if you have not raised up your daughters, your children, to become warriors, you have wasted your gift. You have wasted them. Work on them. That is what it means to be profitable. Everything God has put in your hand, make it a profit. Make a profit of it. Now, as you are going home now, make up your mind that you are going to be a profitable servant. When a pastor has four, five, six people that are profitable, he will be happy. He will be balanced. Because every one of them, this one will go tomorrow, is bringing converts tomorrow. This one will go, is bringing converts. The church growth is actually the people you have as a gift. When they go and bring what? Flock, will bring converts and increase the church. And go. Then the pastor will begin to minister to them. And go. Next board again, you will go. A program is coming. Maybe out of the 12 people he has, they will all go. Jesus send them two by two, two and two, and go. And they will come back. This person said, That day we brought five. Oh, that day we brought this. That day we brought this. Next month again, they will go. And the church will be growing. But if you have only some kind of members, they only talk and complain, and they are not profitable, the hunger will kill the whole church. Hunger will kill the church. So this program is planned to make us profitable servants. A servant is humble in nature. A servant have a learning attitude. A servant is committed. A servant knows that he is here for business. A servant knows that he is out to prosper the company, the kingdom. That's what a servant is in the heart of every servant. Have you noticed that it is those who are servant this generation that will become the governor in the next generation? Have you noticed that? It is not the son of Zeke, Awolo and Co, that are ruling the country now. It is rather those who serve them that are in charge now. And the funny thing is that those ones that are in charge, their children are peke peke because they served nobody. They don't even know how to cook rice. They can't even, they are not brother because my mama, my, my, they have servants. They have servants. They are taking to the school. They don't even know road. They enter vehicle. They don't even know what is happening. And go. They, they, they don't, they are not here with us. They can't survive the mosquito. They can't survive the hardship. And go. So they run. They are the first to run out of the country. Run to Bodo Yube and go there. The people who are ruling now are those who were one time servants. Are you hearing me? The servants are the rulers, eventually. I don't know the kind of people you are producing in your house, especially those of you who are rich now. Those of you who are rich, will you still remember how you became rich? That it is through service, through servant, that you became rich. Will you not also teach your children that this is the way of success? Or will you exonerate them from service? And then at the end, they will not be employed. And truly speaking, when Evangelist Frank was talking of that woman who locked up the husband and scattered the church and go. My spirit was telling me it must be a daughter of an affluent man. That's the person that will have that courage. It must be a daughter. Maybe that pastor had decided, okay, and this person I go marry, my, the, the daughter of so and so big man, because his eyes to get influence also. Not knowing that that family didn't have time to train their children and go. And you have married Mary and Maka and go. Have you come and you talk something that he doesn't hear? I will beat you up because he has confidence because of the father's word and lock you up there. And that's you see how the church ended. Then, how are you training your children? Are you training your children as servants? 
or they are just my mama, my papa, my mommy, my daddy, and go. They can't fetch water. They can't go and do work. They can't even serve the church. They can't serve the church. You can't see them in equipment. You can't see them walking here. They are just selling the type of people and go. You know they are not going to lead tomorrow because it's not compulsory that the son of the pastor will inherit the church. It's not compulsory. It's not written in our policy. It's not written in our policy. So don't say, hey, my father, my father is the, was the regional overseer of this ministry. My father was the national pastor of this ministry. And uh, based on inheritance, he will give it to me. It's not happening in system. System doesn't have that policy. It is those who serve who developed their skin by service. Those are the people that will be. The other ones are, maybe we can make them queen of England. The other queen of England. Make them queen of ceremonial queen. Uncle. What grows the church as a servant? Do we have servant attitude? Uncle. Servant. Let me conclude by telling you that every branch that bears for fruit will be manured. They will be, you know, purified to produce more. Look at how he said in the book of John, chapter 15. I'll be rounding up now. In John chapter 15, look at verse 1 to 2. And I am the true vine, says Jesus. And my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Amen. That's, that's the law. So if you are producing, effectively producing, Maybe from a particular branch you have produced it, you will be favored. You will be noticed. Because God must have noticed such a branch before he can purge him and cleanse him and give him more, you know, advantage, favored advantage. So God is taking note. God is taking note. It is God that promotes as a pastor, as a leader, we are taking records. Heaven is taking record too. And when we discover that something good is coming from this end, something good is coming from this, the headquarters will recognize it. I was telling you people yesterday or there about that why we have been coming down in everything called promotion, in everything called uh, posting and code, is because we want to make sure you know what you ought to know. That's why we are spending time on this training. But after this training now, your report will matter. Your report. Your weekly report, your monthly report, your seasonal report will be taken into account. And whereby we are not getting a good report, what are we waiting for? You are given a church, a branch, for instance. The region of Isaiah posted you to a particular place and gave you maybe two, three, four members. And you stay there for one year, two years, three years, and you are the same number. My friend, what are we waiting for? We'll collect the flock and give it to another person. We will not go into look at any face and go. That administrators have already empowered to do that. You won't even see me. That any particular person that is not productive uh, shall be reassigned. Amen. It shall be reassigned. Look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, uh, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. That's why we are doing discipleship program. You bear much fruit. Father is glorified. That is his joy. I want to hear testimony, not complain. I want to hear that your region has developed and it has now become two regions. It's due for two regions. I want to be happy. 
headquarters want to be happy that wherever you are posted that you are there to do work and to help the ministry to increase and multiply praise the lord based on all these short informations i want to give you our recommendation take note of this recommendation is in line with what i said yesterday our recommended strategy for growth write it down recommended strategy for system growth see yourself as a pillar in the church you must not see don't see yourself as a visitor if you are a system and you are a member and from now henceforth every church must have membership diary some people don't have any notebook they call membership you must have membership notebook the person should know after he has finished his revolutionary seminar amen and i've done his baptism revolutionary seminar is supposed to take seven weeks seven weeks revolutionary seminar seven weeks after he has completed seven weeks revolutionary seminar and is baptized if he has never been baptized somewhere else but if he had been baptized in the Pentecostal church and is born again there, he just decided to change to us. Seven weeks revolutionary seminar and go. We will dedicate him as our member. One has to be a member first. Let him know, be conscious of the fact that he has become a member so that we will not be struggling over his body or his soul. That from now henceforth, you are a member of CCM. Your name is registered. Praise God. Then before he now continue to other series of discipleship that will graduate him to a worker, he has to be a member first. And there is, there is expectation of members. And he has to be a member. It is members that are discipled to become workers. And when he had been discipled and he had finished the, the discipleship class, what we call the fundamental Bible doctrine and teachings and co, then he will become a worker. He will also be called up and be dedicated. His name will be written as a worker. And then if he now attend ministerial training, and he will also be receiving certificates of a minister. Or a leader hallelujah so what are the recommended strategies for growth number one write it seek to live for the lord and to please him and populate his kingdom every person must seek everybody says seek because you see that seeketh shall find seek for it some people we are searching for jesus some people had to seek to see Jesus. You have to seek it this time, not just to be born again because you're already born again, but you have to seek to live for Him and to please Him and to help in populating His kingdom. If you have not taken that decision, then you cannot be a help, you can't help us. For you to be a vessel, a servant, a faithful servant, a profitable servant, it must start by your personal decision to seek for the kingdom of the master, to help for the kingdom of the master, and to please the master. Since it is by this that the father is glorified. It is by this that the father is highly pleased. Therefore, personally make up your mind. Let people not force you. It's, you are not born into it it's not because you are born by the pastor no you have to personally make up your mind to live as to please the master and as to serve him to help to contribute for the growth of the church that's point one point two we have to seek for opportunity Everybody say opportunity. You have to seek for opportunity. 
and then turn every such opportunity to win souls we have to seek for opportunity and when you find such opportunity <clears throat> turn it for soul winning turn it for soul winning you'll be looking for opportunity to speak you'll be looking for opportunity to come in you'll be looking for opportunity to show up make sure anywhere you find yourself seek for opportunity opportunity if you travel if you are in a school wherever where you are you are looking for opportunity and if you get that opportunity don't waste it one day jesus himself was seeking for opportunity to preach to the Samarian people. Samaria. Samaria actually is a part of the Jewish land, is a part of Israel. But because of the mix up, the mix up, that part of area called Samaria were inhabited by non Jews. So they have mixed blood and they were no more real Hebrew. And the, the Jews were forbidden from going there. There is nothing in common between the Samaria and the, the, the Judas, the Jews. But Jesus wanted to preach to them. But Jesus can never enter there because he, he was a man of the law. Amen. He was a Jew. He was not a Gentile. He was 100% a Jew and has to keep the law of the Jew. And if he breaks any of the law of the Jew, he cannot die for the unrighteous. He has to die his own death. So he was very careful. But he needed them to hear the gospel. But he can't enter. So one day, as they were passing across, they were just passing across, there is this, you know, well that separated the Jews from the Samaria. And so that's where they were. And they were hungry. Jesus and his disciples. So he sent the disciples to go. Don't go into the Samaria. Go far back to the Jews. And there you buy food. While Jesus was there waiting. But he was looking for opportunity. All of a sudden opportunity came. A woman of Samaria came. And they began to discuss. And from there he manifested his gift. He manifested his power. He showed forth his wisdom and he made him, he preached himself as the Messiah. And this woman said, Whoa. It was the woman now that came. He didn't ask Jesus, Okay, come in, come now, come and enter into the real uh, 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 Samaria city and preach there. No, that was a law. So it was the woman that went now and compared all of them. I said, come and see a man that have told me all that I have been doing. And go, are you sure this is not the Messiah we are looking for? And everybody has to follow her. Come, dear. And Jesus got that opportunity. So they said that even when the disciples came and said, Master, eat. He said, no, 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 I'm in spirit. I have a kind of food I eat that you don't know about. And he was able to minister to multitude of the Jews. I mean the Gentiles. Samaria and accepted the Lord hallelujah it was that work that Philip later went when it was his turn to go and manifest in fullness because in the time of Philip they have been liberated the Jews can now go Christ Jesus has divided removed the separation by his death on the cross so Philip and Co has the power now authority to go into the uttermost part Shout hallelujah. So seek for opportunity. In the school, in the business, wherever you are, even in marriage, anywhere you find yourself, seek for And when that opportunity comes, make sure you utilize it very well to turn souls, whether Catholic, non-Catholic, turn them into true charismatics. Praise the Lord. That is, befriend people for the sake of the kingdom. It's opportunity. When you meet anybody in contact, in the telephone, or in the Facebook, or in anywhere, befriend that person. Have a good contact rapport, like I told you yesterday. And by so doing, you have gotten prayer points. You have gotten people you can minister to. And you have gotten people you can convert. Point number three. 
how to become a profitable servant seek for the Holy Ghost you have to seek for the Holy Ghost and for the power of the Holy Ghost for the gift of the Holy Ghost seek for the Holy Ghost and not only for the Holy Ghost seek also for the anointing the power of the Holy Ghost you need it that's why Jesus had to tell them carry you here and if you are in this convention you must know there is no way you are going back the same way you came you must have power you must receive power you must be refilled with power you can never go back the same seek for it thank God for this night by this night you are going to have endowment of power and the gift of the Holy Ghost because the kingdom of God is not a kingdom of bread and butter power power so if you don't have power you can't help the pastor if you don't have the power you can't help CCM you have the Holy Ghost power with which you'll be able to conquer and expand the kingdom how many of us here are baptized in the Holy Ghost and you can speak in tongue you can't you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Stand up. If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, I will test it you. If I doubt you, you will come here and pray in tongues. That's a sign. And if you come and do a full thing, I will know. You, you have not been baptized. I said, those who are baptized in the Holy Ghost, stand up. Let me see. If you are not been baptized, please sit down. We'll give you attention. Because you see, the church grow and grow and grow, and they may forget the basic. You find out that even though we are answering charismatic, there are some that have no charisma. They have not been baptized. Their papa born them. Their mama be member. And so they are inherited. They are system by inheritance. And there are converts we made. As far as they can do good, and behave well and have good moral moral and co cool, they are already accepted we have forgotten that without the gift of the holy spirit we are not a charismatic in the true sense of it. because it is by this sign shall all men know shout hallelujah sit down all of you that are not yet baptized or even those that are baptized but the only thing you know how to do is to speak in tongues there is no extra I want to tell you that it is the Holy Ghost, the same Spirit, the same Holy Ghost that makes you to speak in tongue. It's the same Holy Ghost that will make you manifest healing. It's the same Holy Ghost. If you go further, dig deep, dig deep, you will also get what? The power for miracles. The same Holy Ghost. I was telling the Potakot people the other day, that there is one bush in our place forest that forest we only open it once in a year once it is open once in a year people will go there and get whatever you want you can get kinds anything you want you'll be getting it and people like us will go there to get snare everybody says snare so we'll go there to get snare big big fat snare so, but many people, when they go, they're looking for those big ones and go. So, but when I go, I see the Nkene. Everybody say Nkene. All this vocabulary, I hope you are writing it down. Because it will come out in objective. It will come out in objective question. Everybody say Nkene. So, I will see the Nkene. Some people will leave it. I will collect the Nkene. Yes, the Nkene means the, the small, small ones. You call it Nkene. And the one that looks like a male, you call it Wobo. Wobo. Everybody say Wobo. So this is Wobo. The female one is Nkene. The male one is Wobo. I will pick it. I will begin to sing for it. Because I know that Wobo or Nkene must have a father. And must have a mother. Are you hearing me? 
But the mother will hide somewhere under and will ask the Nkene to go about. So when I pick the Mwopo and I pick the Nkene, I begin to sing. Mwopo, potan nege, potan nage. Mwopo, potan nege, potan nage. Potan nege, mwopo, potan nege, potan nage. Mwopo, potan nege, potan nage, potan nege. Mwopo, as I'll be singing, I'll be looking up. I will look, I will see the heavy father somewhere hiding. Because the moment you see one up, there must be the father somewhere. And I'll be singing, I'll be singing and dancing. And you will see heavy one. I will carry it. Praise God. And my auntie will say, ah, Sabi, how do you get this? I say, hey, you saw that one and what boy you left. It is one boy and Nkene that showed me their father. Uncle. They're speaking in tongue, it's just a sign. Are you hearing me? It's just a sign, it's evidence. It's evident that Holy Ghost stayed there. Holy Ghost stayed there. And if you are speaking in tongue, I'm speaking in tongue, I'm praying in tongue, I'm praying in tongue, I'm praying in tongue, and tarry all of a sudden, you will see the anointing. You will also see the gift of the Holy. You can now see that the gift of healing is also there. You can also see that the gift of revelation is also there. Eh? You can also, as the further you go, the more you discover the miraculous. The same Holy Ghost that has the Nkene, the same Holy Ghost that has one more, if the same Holy Ghost has the miraculous hidden somewhere, you have to go deep and you see where they are hidden. That was why Peter and John, after the Holy Ghost baptism, after the Pentecost, they were still going prayer, 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 until they noticed that they can do miracles. Shout hallelujah. So I want you, when you go home, with the, the you are baptized, the Holy Ghost is a sign. Then begin to develop, dig deep, dig deep, until you are able to produce, I mean to discover the other gifts of the Holy Ghost. As long as you have the speaking in tongue, desire you also other spiritual things, especially that you may prophesy desire you hunger for it if you don't desire you end up with speaking in tongue only speaking in tongue until you die until until you die only speaking in tongue but if you desire you can desire and begin to prophesy you can desire deep and begin to do miraculous that's a full developed charismatic shout hallelujah point number four join the unit ministry if you are going to be if you are going to help as far as being a profitable person join the unit ministry something like faith clinic you should join the faith clinic it is in faith clinic you develop it's in faith clinic join prayer warrior join the visitation and counseling and singing group you must belong you must belong join faith clinic Last night I was telling you about Faith Clinic and go. Do you know how I became a Faith Clinic minister? It was not an easy matter. I remember in 19, it was 1982. I was still living in Knife's house, but it was opening charismatic fellowship. Opening charismatic fellowship. So one brother called Alphonsus was a young convert. <coughs> Alphonsus was in year one, my convert. And uh, yeah, I just left the parents and come to the campus, join the charismatic. All of a sudden, Alphonsus became mad. He just turned mad in the campus. And we couldn't send him back to the village because the parents had already disowned him because he joined charismatic. Alphonsus became mad. And so we took him to a different hospital, took him to a different hospital, and he was getting worse. Then we took him to conferences, took him to conferences. There was one conference, my first conference in Paracourt, Uniport. We took him to Uniport. They all did the, all the prayers, no war. Called other great men of God, they prayed for him, no war. You know what they did? They brought Alphonsus to my first house. 
where I was staying and push him there, put him there. Lock him up in one room and everybody went for his lectures. That time I was already doing industrial attachments. So I had the time. I was already doing in my diploma. I finished my diploma working one year experience. So I was there. It was me and Alphonsus. They brought it to me. There is no case that has suffered me like that case. But I learned a lot. Alphonsus. Alphonsus was satanically manipulated. He was a terrorist. When everybody had gone, it is just me alone. And I would like to send him food, to give him food. Even right from the kitchen, when I'm bringing the food to go and give him, he called me. He said, Sabi, keep that your food. Keep that your food. If you bring it here, I'll pour it in your eye. But keep that food. Come and lose me from here. Remove all the chains. I will see being the other. He had already known that I was bringing food. He has a level of divination. He said, uh, Sabi, Ekuma is coming. Ekuma is already in the junction. It's like you sent for him. Two of you will come and go. I'll pieces two of you. I'll pieces two of you. Okay, you went and brought Ekuma so that two of you will bind me. You bind me. He'll be shouting it. I will, after that, I will go and pray. Pray, 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 pray. I'll come again. He said, hey, you don't come. Open the door now and see your head cut off now. Open it. Open it. Don't pray for me. I think you have finished praying. Open the door now. You see, your head is already cut off. Oh, I pity your mother. This boy will be talking, talking all nonsense. So everybody have tried one day. I took up courage and went. There is a big generator in that room and go. That time he has been removed. His chains have been removed. He carried that big generator. He says, Sabi, do you know what I'm carrying in my hand? You want to open the door? Open now, open. I'm carrying that big generator with one, one hand. He was able to carry that big generator. He said, if I don't use this thing to squish you here, bury you here, just know that I don't exist. You post that. Then I will open his eyes saying, Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, drop it, in Jesus' name. That's the time I discovered the name Jesus. Man. I didn't just read it. I want it. He will drop it. So one day he said he will kill himself. He broke the louver. One louver line. And said, Sabi, today, pray your last prayer before you come in. Pray your last prayer. I am with one blade of that thing. I'm cutting off your neck. Your head from your shoulder. I'm cutting it off. Just open that. And when I open it, you hear that? I said, Alphonsus, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, drop it. He will not drop it initially. He will do my. So one of those days he said, Okay, I will kill myself for me. I will kill myself. And they will come here and arrest you that like you killed me. So he broke that louvers, put it in his mouth. And so I said, I'll swallow it now. And they will come and catch you. You end up in prison. You since you don't want to, you are not, I am now the school you came to study. He put it in his mouth. I said, Alphonse, vomit it in Jesus' name. Vomit it. He will. He will do as if he has swallowed it. He will not vomit it. He will carry it in the mouth too, until after maybe after one hour. When I, if I don't cancel it, he will vomit it. But if, if after a while, I don't have that conviction again and give another contrary command, then I have killed myself. So, after a while, and go, he said, okay, I vomit it. Take it. You vomit it. I learned fake clinic from the young man. He was, he was like my specimen in which I learned fake clinic. Yes. And in the night, I would pray. Nobody need to tell me because it's me and him. The boy can break anywhere and come in. 
It's only me and him. Mr. Sola has finished and left. The Kuma has come back. It's just me and him in that whole house. So I have to pray. Pray. And after praying and charging, early in the morning, I will go and pray. He said, uh, uh, Sabi, you are, not, you are not pitying your mother. You are not pitying your mother. That's the person I'm pitying. If not, I know what I want to do. And go and you end. He quench you here. So it was through Alphonse. This is Alphonse I'm telling you now. Eventually, one day, after all said and done, I intercession and go, I came up, laid my hand upon him. So Alphonse, today is the day of deliverance. Laid my hand upon him. He looked at me. That was in freedom. One day. But it took me almost two months before he, come, he came to that. He is a general overseer now. This man I'm telling you is a mighty man of God. Alphonse. So faith clinic is something you, you just have to learn it. But you have to be involved. You practice it. And it is when you now prove this thing, this authority of Jesus, that it is real. And when you just say in Jesus' name, it's not in the air. You, don't, you have not thrown a word to the air. You have spoken the tangible something. And it has gone forth to execute it. If you change it again, you have aborted it. So many of us pray prayer and we abort it. When it's already in the formation, you go and cancel it, abort it. Join Faith Clinic. Today, if there is any case you have, immediately we go now break. Go to Faith Clinic. If none of these regional parts will go. None of these regional parts will go until your case is solved. It is, we are giving them leave. We are making these regional parts to, to, to look, to feel so comfortable. Come to them and say, uh -huh, I think you are a political pastor, I have come to you. Something is <laughs> hold him. Let him prove his apostleship. Are you going to, let him prove his apostleship. Go and hold. There are some other sisters who would also sister Jim and uh, sister Lizzie and all of them. I invited them there for this purpose. There is no case that should go with you. No case. Call it failure. Call it read or you read and forget. Go and hold Collins. Go do anything at all. Go, make sure you don't go home with your sickness or problem. Shout hallelujah. Because by this shall all men know. By this. It says this sign shall follow us. As long as we have charisma love. And we have the charisma gift. We will be able to penetrate. Everywhere. Point number five. Always spend on testimony and thanksgiving. Almost always spend on it. What I mean is that if there is any one testimony that you have achieved, either through Fair Clinic or Freedom Hour or any of the program, spend on it. Testify. Invite people. That one brother that is doing it here, like him so well, Pastor Chid. Chid. Once in a while, she will come. After he has spent some time fasting and praying and praying for people and go, he will come. He will invite those people that has testimony. They will bring their flock. They will bring their family and go. Last uh, Sunday, he was the only person that came with big ram. Came with big ram. Went to the market and bought the biggest ram there. To come and thank God and invited friends, invited people and go. Church filled up. If there is any testimony at all, invite people around, invite people. And when they come, they hear the gospel. Out of those that hear the gospel, some will abide. Make this church a lively thing. Let it be lively. Invite people. Let the church, if you don't have money, church can help you cook. Boy, rice somehow invite them. Although, even if you don't have money to feed everybody, 
those people that came, the new members, the, those people invited, serve them. And they'll be happy. That's how to make the church grow. Finally, you have to, number six, okay, there are seven of them. Individually, individual involvement of every member. Every member of the church should be involved. Nobody should be a spectator. Find out where he is good for and add him. Put him somewhere. When job is distributed, then everybody will see his irrelevance and importance. Some church you go, only two people are working, suffering, and the rest, they will just come and go. Involve everybody. Make sure that everybody has an assignment to do. If it is like here, some people invite, tell, give them assignment. These are the people who will sweep here. Then and other people who will use water and, uh, you know, scrub it. Share the work. There are those, the people that will do the first of all, the first sweeping. And then the, the perfect people who will come and use water and clean it so that people can lay, kneel down here or even sit down here. That's assignment. Then those who will be bringing seats and packing it, share it. Make sure everybody has work. Those who will clean the toilets, share job. Pastor should supervise, make sure that the job is shared. Some, there will be somebody who will be sharing envelope, envelope, offering envelope, or tight envelope. The person, the person cannot miss church because you know that if I miss church, nobody will share the envelope. So you must give people assignment. The person who will open the door. Do you need to preach that person to come early? If you tell somebody your own assignment is just open the door. Every Sunday or every Wednesday, come and open the door. Do you still need to pray that he will come early? You don't need prayer. Some of the things we pray is because we didn't share work. If you share work, everybody will know that he has assignment. If at any time he fails, there must be a serious reason. So let's share work. Get everybody involved. Don't say he must be a worker. Do you need to be a worker before you can open door? Do you need to be a worker? You don't need all that. There are little things you'll be doing while growing. You'll be doing while growing to dust this flower. Do you know that this flower may have existed for one month and nobody had even remembered to dust it? Give it assignment and let the people know that as you are dusting it, that's how God is also dusting your own life. Let them know the special benefits in doing that. As you open the door, every day as you open the door, that's how heaven opens the door for you. And the person will know that he, this is his own call. Assignment, he will grow from there to another. And finally, belong to ourselves. You must belong to a house cell or prayer cell. One person can have two or three. You can belong to two or three prayer cells, provided they are not meeting at the same time. One hour, just one hour a week. Make sure that every system member has a house cell or a prayer cell. A prayer cell. That's where you have two, three, four people gather together and make agreement prayer. And as you pray and pray, those people are your prayer partners. Write out their prayer points and carry it home. Link up the, the leader. Link up the general coordinator of that prayer cell. Link him to it so that he can share your body. A pastor also can share your body because when, they, when he turns to a testimony, uh, he will reap also. He will enjoy it. So get the pastor involved. Tell him you have opened another prayer cell where you are working or in your school or somewhere else. And he, he wants you, you want him to help you in prayer so that that house fellowship or prayer cell will grow. And if there is any challenge, let him know. Praise the Lord. That's how a church comes to be. You start from a cell, cell. And pray and pray until a time comes when a crusade or a program will be held. Shout Amen.
what do you stand to gain as a profitable servant as a profitable servant the Lord said well done everybody say well done it's a commendation well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful in the little I will now make you to enter and to get into a higher level that's what Jesus said what it means that you'll be promoted you'll be promoted you'll be promoted then he which had received uh, uh, two talents look at verse 22 he also that had received the two talents came and said Lord thou delivered unto me two talents behold I have gained two other talents beside them his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee now ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. God said, I will make you. That's I will promote you. I will make you greater. I will elevate you. I will give you more unction. I will empower you. And now enter into the joy of your master Simply because you are faithful Maybe you have not been recognized Continue One day the Lord will recognize That you are good and faithful And you will be elevated Shout Amen I want us to pray I just want us to pray your prayer point is God make me good and faithful servant that through me this church my branch will grow I'm telling us practical things we need to do every member every member must find his own role and part every pastor must know his role and part when a pastor is able to turn you know indolent people that are not working and turn them into useful instruments the church will grow by the administrative part of the church pastor making sure that everybody made useful committed give him a task give him a, a goal set a goal for him and he will grow you are bringing out the hidden talents to work all the hidden talent the hidden gifts will manifest and you will grow and the church will bound. Heavenly Father, we have come again with a burden in our heart to make this church grow, to bring us to the level of excellence. Lord, we want to come up to a higher level as a reason of your excellent spirit, Lord, locate every one of us. Grant us that spirit of excellence and whereby we will know what is right to do and to do it we will not be like the wicked and the slothful servant who is unfruitful the wicked and the, uns the, the slothful that must perish we will not be like that help us O oh God by thy excellent wisdom and power that every one of us Lord may become fruitful and profitable in your kingdom in jesus name we pray let me hear you say amen okay you have a question okay 